two teams desperately needing a victory. And the jump will go to the Highlanders. We're underway. Crystal Hubbard, Kevin DiDomenico taking you the distance today for a huge conference game. And what a matchup this should be. As I said, it looks like it's going to be a bang up down there in the post. Jeffers to Brian Hart tries to split the difference. Knocked away. Another chance. Once again, the tall trees of Hampton are there. That one deflected in the air in transition and out of bounds. As we take a look at the Hampton starting lineup, it's Garvin, Dickens, Epstein, and Bethea. Nothing, nothing, your score early going for Radford. They'll go with the same starting lineup they've had in the last three games, including Williams, Mangum, Jonkum, Jeffers, and Hart. Jeffers has been the go-to guy scoring as of late for the Highlanders. That duo with Hart up top as well. Radford looking to get something going. The shot clock's winding down. He's been lethal from three. Continues it. It's Drayvon Mangum and the Highlanders strike first. Drayvon Mangum is going to be a problem from out around the arc. He's had a good season. 37% three-point shooter. He is a three-point threat. Baseline, drop off, Dickens knocked away by Williams. What a play on the seven foot one Dickens. Williams rising up, transition, offense, left wing, fires away, no. Board to Jonkum, he looks down low, he's fouled, but that's a turnover if they don't make contact with that right arm. And I love the play by Williams here on the other end, the defensive play to get up, climb the ladder there and block the shot of the tree. He is a defender that, I mean, if you if you slept on him, you may not have noticed, but he is a heck of a defender for the Rapid Highlanders. We were talking pregame. He can defend not only the tall trees down low, but the guard position as well. That's right. He's a very versatile player. I mean, he's he's agile and well-suited to move. And Duncan gets the positioning down low against Epps, and he scores 5 nothing run to start for Radford. Epps inside transition. Paint touch goes up. Open look. No, Dickens follow. He's fouled by Jeffers. At 7-1, presence already playing a factor down low. And that's something Rafford's going to have to keep their eye on. Down low, you've got those tall trees down there. They are good around that basket. Rafford's going to have to really shore up their defense and try to stay out of foul trouble right there around the block. Hey, Jordan Dickens, a Old Dominion transfer, like many of these Hampton Pirates. A Hampton, Virginia native, decided to come home from Old Dominion, knocks down the front end. a 53% free throw shooter. Has both. Hampton puts a press on there to kind of slow Rafford's roll there. Sometimes Rafford likes to run and gun. They want to make sure they're not able to do that. So high to John come over the left wing. Williams likes it from straight away, but no, 12 to shoot. Hart wide open, don't want to leave him there, and he knocks down the three from the left wing. It's 8-2. Ryan Hart is an 33% three-point shooter. He's pretty decent from that range. Hampton's going to need to know where he's at. Hart's been lethal as of late. He's come up strong this season after having limited minutes last season, averaging nine and a half per game. Garvin, he's been the go-to guy for Hampton. Go down low to Dickens. Baseline, three to shoot, he doesn't know. Looking outside, three ball. That's way off the mark, and it's a shot clock violation. Hampton had no idea, and specifically Dickens had no idea that nope. the shot clock was about to expire. That's right, they didn't have the clock awareness there. Kind of got lulled to sleep in their own offense, just kind of complacent to pass around the perimeter, not necessarily attacking the basket the way they would want to. Turnover number two for Hampton. And Radford offensively has been spectacular. Three out of four from the floor to start things in the first three or so minutes. Radford looking to get something open. They're passing around the perimeter right now, trying to work a little inside out action, going inside to Jonkum. The go-to guy, Lewis Jonkum. That's a matchup they'll try to exploit today. Lewis Jonkum, who's played a bigger factor game by game for Radford, steps up there. It's 10 to two, Highlanders. Down low, what an entry pass in the flush. 
from Therrien. Wide open underneath the basket. Raffert lost sight of him and he took advantage. Jeffers got hacked, it looked like. He went up strong with the right, no. In the break is Hampton. Epps got away with a carry there, up and under, no. His follow is off the mark and a foul will be called on D'Angelo Epps. And that was excellent defense by the Raptor team there to stop that drive and then to come down with the rebound. Very important because that's a dangerous area he was able to get into, but Raffer was able to come away with the ball. Stapleton into the game for Lewis Jonkum. Jonkum has four. And Jules into the game as well. Jack Jules, he is a dynamic player. He has explosive jumping ability. Matchups are going to be a conversation all night in the front court with Jules and Jonkum switching with Therrien and Dickens, but that's going to be a conversation as Mangum drives hard to the basket from the left side, and he's fouled. It's on Garvin. Yeah, what Jules does not have in height, he makes up in jumping for and jumping ability. He's able to jump out of the gym for the most part. So he's able to pull those rebounds. He's also a really solid player as far as build is concerned. So he's usually able to come down with some of those rebounds. He is tough to guard around the basket. McNeil checks in for Rashawn Williams and he gets possession lobbed up by Stapleton. 17 to shoot, approaching the under 16. Hot start for the Highlanders. Slow for Hampton. Who's won for their last five from the floor. Jules with seven. Looking for back door. Stapleton's gonna have to hoist one. Cut off, deep jumper. Skims the rim. Offensive board, Stapleton drops off Jules. Finger roll, no roll. Jules, a follow, he finishes. Tough basket for Shaq Jules down there to get his own rebound. Turn around on a 360 and put it back against the backboard. Rafford now in the defense. Looked like for a second the shot clock didn't reset. Yeah, it did look like there was a little bit of hesitation there. Eight point lead for Radford, 15.30 to go. Garvin. Down low, trying to make his presence felt off the glass. Kisses it through, 12-6. Beautiful touch there by Garvin to kiss that off the glass on a Jimmy Hook. Garvin coming off his lowest scoring game of the season versus a and Had six points on two of seven shooting. All in all, though, he is a tremendous player. I mean, he's a graduate student. He redshirted one of his years at Nickel State while he was there, but had a season-high 23 points three games ago. That went on from Hart, but strong. Stapleton gets the offensive board. No, Epps pulls down the rebound. Transition drive, Bethel, and he scores off the glass and good. It's 12-8, and here comes Hampton. And what you notice about Hampton on offense already, always challenging the basket. They will take that ball into the lane. They have no problems facing up. Stapleton swings at McNeil. One more, Mangum, far corner. Bounces off, but Jules is there. Offensive boards have been special for Radford last couple possessions. Backdoor cut Stapleton. One more, Mangum. He'll try another three today. Knocked away, and that one's knocked off the backhand of Jules and out of bounds. You just get the feeling Raffert's a little bit out of sync. 12-8, the score 14, 13 to go in half. Number one, another comp. Williams averaging 9.2, so different guys getting in on the action, different nights. Yeah, different guys, different nights. As again, you see a lot of rotation happening. Uh, from that Rafford bench coach, Nick was not shy of using his bench to its fullest potential. Rafford uses the most, well, their bench gets the most minutes in the nation. Yep. Uh, so, I mean, you expect to see that scoring spread out quite a bit, but they do have their role players uh, in scores and the ones we just mentioned. Yeah, Radford leading the nation in minutes off of the bench. Also worth mentioning, Radford's strength of schedule has been rather tough out of conference. They're ranked 69th in the country. ESPN actually has them at 47th. And you, with that, you would expect to see some of your leading scores, whatever they are averaging overall, is probably going to be a little bit lower as, I mean, a little bit higher when they start to get the conference because they played some tough teams. And so getting that scoring ability, a little bit harder against some of those teams when you get to conference, you've kind of found your groove. Oh, it's interesting, too. We saw it early in the season, too, right? Struggling on offense. The drive inside is knocked away by Jules. Look at the hustle from number 13. He stepped on the line. It'll stay with Hampton. They'll have 15 to shoot. Tough defensive play. Again, Hampton challenging the basket, but Radford well aware of where the ball is, and they're going to have to keep that intensity up if they want to have a chance of protecting that basket. 
Inbound from Dean. Returns as their leading store. Fires away, far corner. Ricochets into the hands of Carrion Joseph, who's just checked into the game. Pass ahead to Williams, circle back at Stapleton. Getting big minutes early, the sixth man here today. Changes every day, Stapleton inside the paint. Kick out, Joseph tries a three ball, near corner. Rattles away, board to Stapleton. Another offensive board for Radford. Radford does shoot a lot of three pointers in the game. So they look for them to kind of get those shots off. Another miss there from Radford. They're two of eight from beyond the arc. Meanwhile, Hampton has only shot one three. Short corner, Garvin just muscles his way inside, and the tip in is good from Hampton. Excellent moves by Garvin, not able to get it to go down, but it was salvaged. The play was salvaged. Radford, again, having to watch inside. That's where that ball is going to be going on the Hampton offense. That's Dickens again with the tip, and he averages 4.1 boards per game. Try Williams, swing it. Joseph working toward his Left over to McNeil, two for nine, Radford is now from three. And it just looks like the Radford offense is a little disjointed. They just can't seem to get anything going on the offensive end, and everybody seems a little bit unsure when they have the ball. Seems like from beyond the arc, no one can get it going. Now 0 for three is Hampton from deep. The other thing about you know getting the ball inside and something that's great about this Hampton strategy on offense is when you keep getting that ball inside, it really works your defense because you got to have your guards sneaking down there to at least get a hand in and then running back, rushing back out to the uh, guards. Your post players are getting banged up down there all game long. It is a rigorous game. Entry pass. Jules against Dickens. That's an interesting matchup all night. He airballs the jumper, knocks it away to Epps. Dickens also known for his shot blocking at 7-1. Yep. He's blocked 23 shots so far this season, far outpacing his teammates. Dickens, an interesting story. One of the highest recruits in the state out of high school, ranked fifth in the state of Virginia by ESPN. There's a deep skip pass. Pull up jumper, way off the mark. Dickens a little Bethea. frustrated. He wanted an alley-oop there. He wanted him to toss the ball up for him. He's going to go up and get it. Quickly another. Media timeout, Hampton crawling back into this one. Two point deficit. There you see DeJour Dickens leading the Hampton squad. Leading the Hampton squad as well as Edward Joyner Jr. In his 13th season at the helm of Hampton. Formerly took his squad to three MEAC tourney championships and three NCAA tournament appearances. Led Hampton for quite a long time. Guy who averages 17 wins per year when he's led the squad. And he led Hampton to the deepest postseason run in program history. There's a deep three from Jeffers, an offensive board, and a foul on Williams. Yeah, he's the winningest coach in the program's history. Uh, in 2015, he became the only his team became only the 21st team in NCAA history to make it to the big dance with a record under 500. I mean, he's no stranger to postseason notoriety and accolades. Actually, got his masters from Hampton as well in May of 16. 20 to shoot, 11.34 to go. Inbound to Williams. Radford now 2 of 10 from 3, but you know this team, they'll keep firing away as they do. Williams hey, catches know, and fires. Shooter's going to shoot. they got to keep shooting, you know. If you're a shooter, you have to keep going until you find your rhythm. Radford has proven that they can shoot the three ball, but they're going to have to warm up to it, it seems like, in this game. Ask it early minutes here. We'll go to Dean. Russell Dean, no points, he's 0 for 2. Go to a bread and butter, Garvin. His pull up jumper, no. Nice defense by Jeffers and Co. McNeil transition, taking it the distance, and he's fouled from behind. And I think Haskett would want to argue that one. Looks like he got all ball from the back. Yeah, he, it looks like he did get all ball, but the ball was slipping out of his hands already. I mean, it was a good transition there. Uh, transition defense by the Hampton Pirates. Radford had a nice little series there, defense to offense. Something to look at again is 
Hamptons fouling as he misses the front end foul. Or five first half fouls from the Pirates. Just one for Radford. And it's inter something interesting because Radford really hasn't made a point to pound the ball into the basket. Actually, they've been shooting mostly threes. So for Hampton to get in that kind of foul trouble that early, something to watch. Hampton breaks the press easy, short corner. Skip over to Dean, looks for a three, he's short. Long rebound, is out to the Pirates. Haskett over to Dean. Mismatch down low. Driving inside and flipping it up with the left and getting it to go, it's Russell Dean, the sophomore guard out of Columbia, South Carolina. And he is the second leading scorer for the Pirates, averaging 12.4 a game, so expect him to be a factor in this game also. The sophomore played big minutes last year as McNeil goes up and under. Talk about big min minutes. The transfer from Spartansburg Methodist, Cameron McNeil steps in. Haskett. Dean, nice pass to Dickens, no look. He goes up and finishes, he's got four. And these possessions are happening fast. This is a very fast paced game, if you can't tell it from at home folks, that uh, Rafford and Hampton, they're gonna have to have their benches play a role if this pace keeps up. How about Jeffers, couple jab steps. Remember, Radford has shot 11 threes already. That one almost stolen away by Dean. Nice hand from him. 12 to shoot. Radford gotta be aware of the clock here. That 12 seconds winds down really quickly once you get that ball in bounds. Joseph to inbound, it's to Jeffers. Nine to shoot. Guarded by Haskett, turns the corner, not gonna settle for the pull up, instead he's blocked from behind by Dickens, block number 24 on the season. Dean in transition, avoids the defender in Joseph. Off the glass and good, it's 18-16. Raffer trying to get something going right now, you see him just kind of moving around around the perimeter, not getting the ball inside, really no ball reversal. Deep three Good from shot. Jo Joseph, ricochets off into the hands of Hampton. Garvin, powering his way into the lane. He's gotten there at will and he gets the and one. And here we go, we're gonna put his free throw shooting to the test. We have Najee Garvin going to the line. Take a look at this, Garvin powerful against the, mind you, 6-7 Rashawn Williams, transfer from USF. Garvin having no problem getting to the rim. Chance for Hampton to take their first lead. Rashawn William goes, Williams goes to the bench after that foul. Coach wants to preserve him. He's got one, Radford with two. Garvin knocks it down, 19-18 Hampton lead. Hampton, a team that struggled with the COVID as well. Four of their last six scheduled games have been postponed. Two they have played in that span. They lost to William and Mary and Loyola, Maryland. Jeffers, nice pass to Jonkum. Pocket pass, no, a follow from Mangum. What's the call? It's gonna go the other way. And Jonkum it will have his work cut out for him trying to score down there around the basket against this Hampton defense. They're notorious around the basket. Hampton working the motion there. You see the give and go. That just too far out of the reach of Dickens. Another turnover from Hampton. That's number four. Had a great look there, but it was just floated away from him on the pass. Jeffers driving baseline, offensive foul. Josiah Jeffers is whistled. And a nice defensive play by Mario Haskett Jr., a the Harvard great, transfer. Yeah, great defensive play, he got himself set, took the charge and created the turnover. With 8.09 to go. Radford averages 16 turnovers per game. Right now they only have the one. over to Garvin. 
Swing it to Haskett. That one off the hands of Therrien and Mangum. Open lane. He scores. Beautiful finish by Mangum. Bradford back in their defense. Hampton needs to make something happen here. They want to jump back into the lead. And we're going to probably see this score tossed back and forth between the two. Mangum leading Radford in scoring with five. He averages 6.6 .6 per game. Usually off of threes. Remember, 37% from deep. Dean, what a finish from Russell Dean evading the defender in Lewis Jonkum. Radford liking to run. They get out on it. Stapleton gets the high ball screen. Now looking for the pick and roll. Instead, it's McNeil, 22 to shoot. Let's reset. No, Hart inside. Floater, no good. Pulled down by Therrien. Just a slightly rushed shot there by Hardy. May want to dish it down to Jonkum once he got that deep into the lane. Dean, step back. No. And shots like those can be killer. Look at last year, Davion Warren, the transfer from Hampton that went to Texas Tech, did a lot of that as we take a look at Dean getting his way to the basket. Hampton on top by one. Power isn't born, it's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the must. Chance in their last game back on January 12th against North Carolina A&T, but a tough loss, 69 to, or 67 to 59. A game where some of their top guys didn't have their best game. Russell Dean had one of his worst games of the season with five points on two of eight shooting. Marquise Godwin, three of 15 shooting, and a lot of guys just didn't step up for Hampton, but a chance here today to get a win over Radford. Every day is a new day, and That's we right. see that more and more when you get into conference play. He has got to develop that short-term amnesia. Jonkum tries to sneak one past Therrien. He can't do so. Six and a half to go, 21-20. It seems like throughout the year, Jonkum's been a, a matchup guy. It depends on the team you're playing, but if you know Coach Darius Nichols likes the matchup down low, they're going to play Jonkum more than usual. Ball, ball falls into his hands there. It's Radford Ball. In transition, Stapleton to McNeil. This transition off. Yes, Jonkum is a, a role player. You know, he plays where the coach needs him uh, down in the post or who he needs to play him against. He's a pretty solid uh, at times, you know, on the offensive end as far as, you know, being the, the go-to guy inside. His biggest, I think his biggest issue often is foul trouble. I mean, he plays a physical game, and at times that gets him in trouble. No fouls yet, and there's a foul. Off ball. Uh, like like a lot of big guys, you see Jonkum, you know, he's not always the lightest on his feet, and sometimes that does get him into trouble, obviously, with foul trouble. Radford, I mean, I mean, Hampton, when you look at their team, I mean, you've got you've got Dean out here on the perimeter, and then you've got Najee Garvin that's also on the perimeter, can play inside some. It's just a tough matchup there. Well, Garvin, so physical, able to get to the rim on many occasions here tonight. Hart pulls one down, finds Stapleton in transition. Drop off to Jules, and rarely does he get blocked. Looks like he got fouled there. Yeah, yeah, be careful with those two. Come sometimes hanging on the rim when unexpected. But yeah, as we said, explosive vertical Shaq Jules has. You expect to see that out of him, and you almost pretty much have to foul him to get him to miss that shot. Jules, 59% from the line. The transfer from USC Aiken went to Windermere Prep. First one is good. Two point lead for the Highlanders. Has a pair, three point lead for Radford. Bradford has led by as many as eight early in the game. As Dean is double teamed, splits the difference, floats one up with the left, he can't finish. You see Radford getting the inside position on rebounds there. 
And they've been able to do that. They've kind of been able to hold uh, Hampton to one and done on uh, offensive possessions, getting those rebounds. Radford, on the other hand, getting plenty of offensive boards, not able to do so there. Seven to Hampton's five. You know, expect a little bit of bad blood between these two teams, I imagine, because considering that Hampton enter entered the 1920 Big South Tournament as a fifth seed and ended up knocking off four-seeded Longwood and then top-seeded Radford on their home floor. But they uh, whistled with the travel. A yeah, good point. Hampton lost three straight to Radford as well. Last win was at the Deadman Center back in that 1920 season. Yeah, and I'm sure that has still gone strong. They advanced to the uh, championship game, as which, as we know, did not take place due to the pandemic. So still a little bit left out there. McNeil, step back jumper or left wing. No, what a board from Mangum all over the place today. He's got it far corner, set back up to Hart. Stapleton angling left side with Dine. Seeking out Mangum. Back to Stapleton with three. Strong on the deep three. Bethea. Contact with Stapleton. Kicks over left wing. Nesbitt. Pass deflected away. Bethea, a lot of contact inside the lane. His finger roll is short. Skims off the front rim. Here come the Highlanders. Far corner is Hart. He doesn't need much space, but he'll get fouled, and I think that's seven. They'll shoot a one and one. After we take a break, 3.43 to go. 24-21, Radford leading. And so that's going to keep you dry for a little while. Both teams are looking to get their groove. One and one chance for Brian Hart, the best free throw shooter on the team. 89% on the year. Front end is there. Sigh of relief there, Crystal. No jinx. We've had trouble with that in the past here in the last couple games. Yeah, I think every uh, broadcaster has had trouble yeah. with that. On both sides, both teams. That's right. Second one good as well from Brian Hart. Lead is five for Radford. And Dean to bring it down. A sophomore guard who's in the York Prep High School Hall of Fame kicks over to Haskett, down low. Inside, passes stolen by Hart. And Hart's pass stolen by Dean. Inside, shot blocked, Garvin is denied. Here comes Radford, it's Mangum. The presence of Dickens shoes him away into the hands of Stapleton now with 20 to shoot. Back and forth there, Crystal. You can't tell me both of these teams don't want it really badly. You see the hustle on both sides getting after the ball and those 50-50 balls, people on the floor going out of bounds. The passion is there. Seven to shoot Williams against Garvin. Contact high off the glass, Jules with the follow. And the flush, watch out below. Well then, what a put back that was. Did not quite see that coming. When you have Shaq Jules down there, you have to learn to expect those sorts of things, but my goodness, did he not put that down with authority. Seven point lead for Radford. Haskett steps back, a three is long. And an air ball. And you get the sense that both teams are kind of just reaching. You know, they're really reaching for that score. Radford did hold it together, managed to hold it together in the last offensive possession. Hampton not so much Hampton on the now, trip. Uh, Hampton now 0 of 6 from 3. In a game like this, 5 points might as well be 10 when you're looking at the difference in the score. Williams' shot is strong and clanks off the back iron. Under 2 minutes to go, 7-point lead for Radford. Stout defensive job for the Highlanders so far, holding Hampton to 21 points. There's a drop off to Dickens, and the 7-1 junior flushes it through. Five-point lead for Radford.
Dickens in the starting lineup today was not for the last three games. Did play 20 minutes against A&T last game. Had four points, four boards. He's working against Jules, and that's height right there. He blocks him. That's definitely height. You got to protect the ball on the way up until the very last second, but when you're going up against somebody as tall as he is, it doesn't matter. No look pass is way out of the reach of Dickens. Once again, second time Dean has done that. Yeah, he's just out of sync. And again, you get the feeling that Dean is just reaching. And even the Hampton offense is just kind of reaching, trying to make things happen quickly. Again, in a game like this for teams that play each other this tight, five points might as well be 10. Uh, these teams tend to play each other fairly closely. Five of their last eight matchups were decided by a margin of less than 10. Four of those fives ended with a margin less than five. Stapleton seeking a screen from Williams, finds it. Left, Williams goes, gets both defenders in the air. Now it's Mangum getting one in the air. Another follow from Trayvon Mangum. Dickens said no, Mangum said yes once again. Seven point lead again for Radford. I think the crowd won a little goaltending on that yep. first tip, but then he came back and finished it anyway. Otherwise, I think this crowd might have erupted. 10 offensive boards for Radford and the five of Hampton. Dean turning around, he gets fouled. Williams can't believe it, but Dean will shoot. And it could be that Dean came down on a foot, and when I tell you that's painful, that's painful. One of the worst things you can do in uh, basketball, or really any sport for that matter, is to come down on a foot, and I think when he was finishing his shot there, he may have done just that. Looks like he's favoring the left leg a bit. Uh, he will kick it out and shoot too. Dean is 67% free throw shooter. And that's really important. Things like little things like that affect your shot and affect your game. Yep. I mean, your ability, your lateral movements, and really your balance when getting your shot up. He's going to have to really concentrate right here. First one, good. Dean, a guy who can dish the ball pretty well. 39 assists this year. Last year, he finished 18th in the country with five assists per game. That's right, and I would have ventured to say a lot of those assists went to <laughs> Najee Garvin yeah, or probably Districk. That's right. Well, he had some, he had some weapons. I mentioned earlier, Davion Warren, who transferred to Texas Tech, was a big score for Hampton last year. Thirty-second timeout. Timeout for Hampton as they cut into the lead to five. Coach Edward Joyner says, "Let's take a timeout." The first taken by either squad with 34 seconds. Rafford. So the heartbreaking loss to Campbell. It was their third straight conference loss. 70 to 58 loss to the squad. They were outscored 15 to 1 in the last four or so minutes of the game. And that's just a breakdown on the offensive end. Again, Campbell didn't really have a home fan presence. Nobody in the gym that wasn't required to be there. And a little bit more of a home fan presence here at the Desert Center. Yeah, that makes a difference. Yep. In the games, it really does. The energy from the crowd does lead on to the floor. We see another timeout here called by the Rafford bench. Called by Darius Nichols, and his squad has been tested in those early conference games. Plenty of close games, just haven't really come away with them. And, you know, I mean, this is a, a quite a bit of the squad is, uh, you know, new and learning each other. And again, Coach Nichols does play depth on the bench, so he does rotate through his players, so it does take a little while for things to weld together. Uh, Hopefully, as they start to come down the stretch in the Big South Conference, they're going to get those things to kind of mesh a little bit better. You saw in the first half there, you know, they did get some ball movement, but it did look like folks were a little bit unsure, not sure whether or not to take the shot. What are we looking for here? Do I need to go? You see the unsure feet. You know, it, it takes some of that to get those nerves out and a little bit of that to kind of pull together. But this team looks like yep. they really are working for each other and with each other, and that shows on the court. Meanwhile, how about Hampton, too? Typically typically the last couple games, they haven't really been a first-half team. You look at last game, they shot 26% from the floor, 20% from three, and 33% from the free-throw line tonight. Similar story. 0 for 5 from three and 37% from the floor. And that's just not where you want to be in a tough game like this. Like, and I say, I mean, five points is a lot when you're playing a team that you play this tightly with. Bradford a chance to extend that lead. Five to shoot. Mangum fires away. Off the front end. Hampton has to hustle. Three seconds. Hoist from deep. Epps connects. Beats the buzzer at the two-point game.
Crystal, your thoughts on the first half? Well, Rafford started to settle down. They've kept it kind of tight there on the offense, being a little bit more cerebral on offense. Hampton starting to fall apart a little bit on the offensive end, not getting their rebounds. So we're going to have to see what comes out of this next half for these teams. What a big three from Epps. Connects with their fir Hampton's first three of the game. They're now one of six. Comes at the perfect time. So 30 28 the score. Right now, Dickens held to eight points. As we go sideline, Tory is with head coach of the. And just comes up big with two guys in his face. Sometimes you just need to hit the right <laughs> one. Just got to find the right one. And he found it on his way out. Hampton has not broke the huddle yet. Radford has. It'll be Jeffers, Hart, Mangum, Williams, and Jonkum. The same that started for Radford. We'll see if it's the same for Hampton. Getting set for half number two. As we've said in the past, these teams have played each other very closely. A lot of the games have been decided by 10 points or less. More of them have been decided even by five points or less. So we expect this to get on the wire. Folks at home, don't expect yourselves to get comfortable. It'll be Epps to throw it in. Gives to Dean. We're underway here in half number two. Dean directs traffic. Swings it to Garvin. To Thea. One more to Dean, entry pass, Dickens, pull up jumper, ricochets away, Mangum hauls it in. Two Radford players there going up for the rebound, crashing the board, it's gonna be very important, we talked about that in the half. Jeffers tries to drop off for Jonkum and he slides out of bounds, it'll go the other way. Lewis Jonkum getting down on the floor, trying to corral but ultimately cannot. Looks like he got caught up there on the feet of uh, the defender. Just wasn't able to get himself together after he kind of tried to cut through the lane. Swing it over to Epps, back to Garvin. Garvin today has five points on two of seven shooting. And there's Brian Hart at 6-2 against the 7-1 Dickens, and the whistle will, will go against Hart. That's yeah. foul number one for Radford. He got his body into him as he was getting ready to go up in the air, which is a pretty dangerous play if you're not careful to cause the uh, player to come down wrong. Nice pass to Garvin, who floats it home. Time Beautiful. game at 30. Beautiful finish by Garvin. You love that touch. Najee Garvin now has seven on three of eight shooting in a team high 21 minutes. Jockham thought about the three ball, would have been the first one he's taken all year, and a foul down low. Hey, they say look like a shooter, three-point <laughs> threat, you know. <laughs> three point, you never know what he's going to do. At least make I would have jumped out at him. <laughs> One foul apiece here in the early going. Balance scoring again for Radford. Leading scorer is Mangum with seven. Six guys have put it in the hoop. Jonkum against Dickens. Pass out to Mangum. He goes up and under against a 7-1 Dickens and scores. Smart play by Mangum to go reverse to the other side of the basket and use the basket as a shield against the taller player. Very smart play there. Mangum kicking it into another gear today. Playing far more aggressive, especially off the dribble. Garvin, a threat from deep. He'll settle for the short corner, a fadeaway jumper. Garvin starting to get hot in the second half. He's two of two. Here in the second, he's got nine. And he is not phased by that defense in his face. He realizes that he needs to step up and make a difference. Williams, a hand in the face, no problem, but he misses off to the left. Board to Garvin. Speaking of making a difference, Garvin doing it on the glass. Garvin averages 5.8 boards per game. 
He's guarded by Brian Hart. Interesting matchup there. Yeah, that's an offensive foul. It'll be Wishwell to get it against Russell Dean. Tough defense there by Radford. Be in the right place at the right time. Again, both of these teams, we see, as we've said before, you can tell this is an emotional game. Take a look at this one. Jeffers has been so good on the defensive end, forces that, sells it a little bit, but it looks like Dean extended that arm as well. And you almost get the feeling, you know, Dean wants this so bad, and of course he should. You know, he's there, the ball handler on the team, but you almost get the feeling he's a little bit antsy there, and it's causing him to mess up in a couple little areas. In and out from Jonkum. And you can tell he has to get that one off quick before the arms of Dickens come to his face. 17-27 to go, tie game at 32. Ma good matchup here. Garvin against Mangum. Go to Epps. Four to shoot. Epps, deep two from 17. No offensive board. Cannot be corralled by Dickens. Seems like he had it, but the dribble with his right was too strong. Transition three, Mangum ricochets away, and Radford continues to struggle from deep. 17%, three of 17, kick ball to Jeffers. And yeah, Radford not able to find the bottom of the basket there on the three-point shot, still having woes there around the arc. Three for 17, they're only 17% from the three-point. How about this, Crystal? One for their last 14 as well. And that's where you got to start mixing it up a little bit. You know, get right. those little 15 foot jumpers in there, get it inside, kick it inside out, make the defense move, and things will start to open up a little easier for you. But you also got to get rebounds. Garvin knocked away. Radford in transition. Toss, lob to Jules, comes down with it. And one. He got hacked in the face. He finishes. It's 34 32, a chance for the extra one. Let's take a look at that one. Hart looking for the lob. Yeah, it was Dickens with the slap to the face. Yeah, it came right across his eyes there. That might be one they take a look at. You have the contact to the head. Nevertheless, it'll be Shaq Jules. Dickens is taken out. He's two of two from the line today. No roll there. <laughs> there it is. Broadcasters Carson. Hampton comes down for offense. They're going to have to make something happen. Dean to the corner. The hey. Deep two. No. Jeffers drops off for Mangum. Collision. No call. Jules way too high and long off the glass. Jules had the right idea to reverse it to the other side. He overcompensated there for contact he didn't receive. Dean slicing through the Radford defense. He can't get the roll. Mangum in transition. Back to Jeffers. He's all alone and connects with the deep three from the left wing. And a big one. Timeout. Hampton lead is five for Radford. By no means should he have been that wide open. I'm sure Coach does not like what he saw there. He had all day and tomorrow to take that shot. Jeffers, a 30% three-point shooter, connects from deep. Radford leading by five with 15.44 to go. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Hard work, a love for the game, is mandatory down here. Sacrifice, a desire to be great, live down here. Excellence, the will to compete, persist down here. All sorts of fans here in the Deadman Center. It's Kevin Domenico and Crystal Hubbard. The young and the old, assume cheering on Radford. Maybe Hampton could be. I need to find out where the, uh, the, the hookup is in the shoes there. Talk to the young one. We were thinking about getting matching shoes for our broadcast from now on. Crystal, you in? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely <laughs> in. I'm a sneakerhead from way back. Yeah, let's do that. No one can see our feet, but maybe we'll do a shot. We'll get know. a shot. Yeah, we'll get a shot. 15-40 to go, five-point lead for Radford. They went on a 5 nothing run into the under-16. Right wing for Godwin. He's been rather silent tonight. You know, both teams have pretty spread even scoring. Folks making it onto the scoreboard here today. Radford has seven scorers. Hampton has six. Hart goes entry to Jules. No team yet has anyone in double figures in scoring. Mangum with nine as Jules gets the lob, the follow from Mangum, and there you go, Mangum in double figures. Now he's got 11, and he's been resilient today. Lead is seven. What a night Mangum is having so far. He has been all over the place. He's getting it done on defense, getting it done on offense. He is just really dialed in in this game. It's a different player to step up every game for Radford Crystal. As a deep three from, or deep two from Dean is off the mark. Whether it's Mangum, Jeffers, or Hart, even Williams, different guys been there. Yeah, and in the environment we're playing in right now where you have players that can get sick and whatnot, and even when you're talking about injuries, it's very important to have multiple scorers on your team and on your bench. Not only that, but the lineup that Darius Nichols plays, it gives so many opportunities for guys to shine and equal minutes for a lot of guys too. Deep three from Hart. And he cashes that one. The lead is 10, the largest of the evening for Radford. And honestly, we're looking at the uh, almost immediate body language reaction from Hampton was a kind of a little bit down right there. So we expect to see them kind of reach hard. Jeffers tries to sell it. A response isn't there from Godwin. And a flopping foul. And who's that? Or excuse me, it's going to be a warning. They didn't call that on Jeffers, did they, on that last play? I think it was later. And we'll step aside for immediate timeout. Lead is 10 for Radford. Again, the largest of the East. Two thirty-two. the score with 13.55 to go in the game. Let's go over to Tori. You have to give a lot of credit to Shaq Jules tonight. A lot of his hustle and aggression down in the paint is getting Radford a lot of extra looks. And yeah, thanks, Tori. Jules with eight on two of three shooting from the free throw line, three of eight from the floor. Not only him, not only him but we talked about it with Mangum. He's got 11 on five of nine shooting. How about this eight boards? He's been hustling for, hustling for everything. Yeah, and Shaq Jules is just behind him with six boards. And Mangum, as you said, has also been playing a heck of a game tonight. I mean, this is one he's going to want to hang his hat on for a little while, at least until the next game. 13.45 to go. Stapleton gets a high ball screen from Jules. Drop off to a cutting Mangum. That's knocked away. A good look doesn't come through for Radford. The lob is not there, courtesy of Dean. He was looking deep for Epps. And these are the plays that we're talking about when we talk about the Pirates reaching, trying to get into uh, the scoring column. That's when they're allowing them, when they make those types of decisions, that's what allows a Radford team the momentum to, and the confidence to continue to do what they do. Now we see Hampton setting up in the full court. They want to slow Radford down, maybe cause a turnover or two, but this is more for show or than anything and just to kind of slow the Radford team down so they can score down that, slow down that scoring. Over and back is called and there's turnover number six for Radford. Hampton with 11 turnovers. Dean has four of those and a lot of those are looking for big men down low, but he's been overshooting them. Just kind of forcing it. Um, yep. If he would settle down, you know, he's got to be a leader on the court. He's a point guard, right? He's a ball handler. He's going to have to settle himself and thus uh, settle his team. And he can't do that if he's playing to the hilt and he's forcing, you know, a lot of things into the paint and shots that maybe shouldn't be going up. Godwin looking down low for Dickens. He has a short corner, a shoulder into Jules. It's an offensive foul taken by Jules as DeJour Dickens lowered that shoulder and plowed into Jules. And the frustrations continue for Hampton. You can again see it in their body language. They're a little bit frustrated right now as well. Understandably, they're now down by 10 points, which is I believe the largest margin of the game so far. Not only that, they haven't found an answer on the offensive end. One of seven from three and 35% shooting from the floor. Garvin has really been the only answer getting inside at will, four of 10 from the floor. You just don't see Hampton setting up their offense and finding some a good look at the basket. McNeil fires away with four. That's no good. The board is to Dickens. McNeil has not been great from three, 27%. There's Dean in transition. 
No, but the follow from Epps, he tips it in. Great follow by Epps. Smart play by Radford not to foul the dribbler or the, you know, Dean attacking the basket. They just played a smart play, and sometimes you got to take, you got to eat those. Williams lets one fly with 22 to shoot, and that's an empty possession for Radford again. Can't say I agree with taking the long shot and no rebounding. Nobody crashing the boards there. Radford needs to maintain that. Godwin gets going his first two of the game. Now one for two. Has only played five minutes, so hasn't really had the chance. But Godwin, a guy who's played some big minutes for Hampton in the past, a junior guard. Started all but one game, a transfer from ODU. And actually had 10 points versus a and on three of 15 shooting as Joseph is rejected by Dickens. Ball into the hands of the Highlanders again. H to shoot, they reset. Six, they got to hustle. 11.44 to go. Looking corner, Joseph, two to shoot. Now one, he connects. Big shot from Terry on Joseph. And you cannot let him be all alone with two to shoot on the shot clock. Yeah, he had the opportunity to redeem himself after getting his shot rejected, ending up on the ground on the basket. Pops back out to the wing and able to hit that wide open shot. Dean trying to angle off Stapleton. No offensive board. Look for Godwin. Step back. Looks good. Is good. It's a two. A deep one at that. It's 45 to 38. He can get going. It's Marquise Godwin. Hampton has backed off of that full court pressure there. As you see, they're just kind of picking up after half court. Stapleton into the hands of McNeil. He's pushed over to the far short corner. Now with 13 to shoot, they reset. There's the high ball screen. Jules has space, but the 7-1 Dickens is in the way. McNeil will get a try. Again, cannot connect. Has not been great from beyond the arc, but Godwin has. That's strong. And both teams would do well to kind of wait for their team to be in good position under the basket before taking the shot. There's no need to rush here if you're the Radford team. You're 45 to 38. You got the lead. So command that control of the offense and the, the clock. Williams tries a three, wide open. No, Jules is there, but it's long. Tips it into the hands of Stapleton. Ball stripped away. That's Garvin coming from behind. Turnover number seven, another steal for Hampton. Squandered play by Rafford, just mishandled ball after ball instead of gathering themselves and resetting the play. Rad Hampton now has a chance to score. Radford has shot 24 threes and made six. There's Garvin dropping off. Nice pass, but Epps can't finish. Battle for possession on the floor. Who's it going to be? Jump ball. And possession goes to Radford. And 9.44 to go. Another media timeout. Seven-point lead for Radford. Five to 38. Hampton struggled here in the first half. It's continued into the second half from beyond the arc. One of eight. 36 percent from the floor as well. It looked like toward the end, toward that under 12 media timeout, Ashley Garvin was calling for a timeout. I don't think he got it there. Let's take a, lo a last look at that one. Tips in the hands, and it was a battle for possession there. You see number three, Garvin dive for it. And he's looking for a timeout right there. I think you can also call it travel. He's yeah, it, around it's, floor it's a little somewhere bit. between a travel and a timeout. He wasn't able to get his hands together to form the T, but he was saying with his mouth. But I think what really uh, didn't allow that to go in his favor was the fact that he did not have complete possession of the ball. It kind of bounced around in there. So the ref is waiting for him to gain possession for to call his timeout. Garvin has nine points. He leads Hampton in scoring on four of 10 shooting. He averages 15 a game, the Nichols State transfer. One of seven transfers on this Hampton team. And in these next- uh, Guys get, that get big minutes. That's right. In these next nine minutes, 30 seconds, Rafford's gonna need to control tempo, control the ball and control the clock. They are in the lead. They need to play like that's the way where they are. Hampton, on the other hand, needs to rush Rafford and not allow them to do that. They're going to try to 
Make them commit, make them do something. Trying to force a turnover, and there you go. They get a shot clock violation. And that's what you want. If you're Hampton, you can make Raptor use the clock. Now, you don't want to do that every time because you don't, the clock is not your friend if you're Hampton at this point and not in a game like this. So, okay, yes, you do get the uh, turnover on the shot clock, but what you want to do is try to make Raptor mess up and then pull the rebound if you have to. Well, we've talked about it all night. Hampton has not been great offensively, obviously 36% from the floor, but they don't have to have you know, they don't have to make shots on defense. You can just get stops and try to turn that defense into some offense. And right now the offense, it, it, I just don't see an offensive set. And there you go, Garvin with the deep floater. <laughs> Who needs an offensive set when you've got Garvin there with the floater? He's got such a magical release. I mean, it's beautiful when it comes off his hands. But again, is it sustainable if you don't have an offensive set? Joseph hits the back iron on that three. Five-point deficit. Hampton with the ball. Dean in transition. Pull-up jumper from the free throw line. And that's off the back iron. And again, those quick shots for Hampton. Jeffers navigating his way through the Pirates. He's working against Godwin, finds Hart. That's a deep three. Hart's strong on that. And a foul is going to go against Mangum, and that's the right call. He knows it. He knows it. He was between two players out of position, and I'm telling you, that's where th this right here down this stretch is where both teams, you got to play smart. The smarter team is going to come out with the win. They're at Mangum. He's played a great game so far. That was a miss on plays. He should have gone ahead and just let that go uh, because it's more important that – you maintain the possession of the ball or that you just go on to defense, you don't get a foul. Last eight minutes of this one. Five point lead for Radford. So Radford has kind of let Hampton just crawl back into this one, even though their shooting hasn't been great. As Dean turns the corner, to the left he goes, finishes with the right off the glass. It's a one possession game. And you always get the feeling that Dean's kind of looking for his one on one or his one on four, you know, take on offense, not necessarily setting up a play. Hart is rejected. As it looked like Epps stepped on the line, it'll be Radford ball. Radford is scoreless in the last three minutes, 49 seconds. Has Hampton found an answer on offense? We'll see when we come back. Step aside with 7.51 to go. Letting Hampton hang around. Three-point lead for the Highlanders with 7.51 to go. Hey, we got some characters in the crowd right next to the band. <laughs> yeah, it's a lovely tan line, too. <laughs> um, yeah, Hampton is definitely trying to claw their way into the lead. You've got Naj Najee, Garvin, you've got Russell Dean, both trying really hard to pull their team back in. Garvin, you almost feel like he just needs the ball in his hands and he'll make something happen. Russell Dean, you see him trying really hard to make things happen, sometimes not making the best decisions and maybe being a little impatient. What I'm not seeing on the floor for Hampton is on the floor of leadership and the way of pulling the team together, settling them down, getting them into a play set, and making something happen in the half-court offense. You're just not really seeing that out of Hampton. And that's maybe just not their style of play. Radford ball with the three-point lead. Highlanders have led by as many as 10. 12 minutes to go in the second. Jeffers tries to fit it inside to Jonkum. It'll be a jump ball, and I think that's going to Hampton. And again, forced pass there by the Radford offense, forcing it down in between players. You know, you, as a general rule, you don't want to pass below the knees to your post player in traffic because it's just hard to find the ball between all that, and there's too many opportunities for it to get taken away. And unfortunately, Radford made that decision. Hampton now has a chance to make something good happen here on this possession. Six of Radford's nine turnovers have come in the second half. There's Garvin looking for an entry, tipped away by Williams into the hands of Therrien. Here's Godwin. He's made his impact felt in the second half. Over to Garvin. Hampton wants the ball in his hands. He drives. Offensive foul on Garvin. His third, and that's a big one. That is a big one. Garvin's going to have to stay in the game. Coach probably is going to take him out because he is needed. Uh, that could have gone either way. That was almost 50-50. Either that was a charge or that was going to be a block. He was hoping to get the contact maybe in the shot. You look at it again here. He thought maybe he'd get that, but instead he got the contact there. Lewis Jonkum with a heads-up play. Just outside the restricted area as well. Under 20 to shoot. 7.04 to go. Radford needs a score here. Is Hart going to be the answer? Try Mangum. He's been the answer all day. Strong. Williams with a huge board, and Radford can reset. 
Rafford needs to take that time off the clock and then get a good look at a shot. Williams, contact with Garvin, he goes up, no. Contest by Therian, Jules tips it back in. Garvin wanted a goaltend, didn't get the call. And that was a really close call. He may have had an argument there. Shaq Jules was really close to that rim when getting his rebound. I think the ball might have been still on the cylinder when he got it, but nonetheless, the two points counted. Down low, Therian working against Jules. Finds his way to the bucket, gets his own look. Rejected by Mangum. And a foul, it's offensive. Who but Josiah Jeffers makes the play down low. It's going to be whistled against Garvin. That's four against him. And it's Radford ball up five. And you hear this place starting to light up. Coach Joyner not happy with that call there. He wanted something else to happen. Radford, hey, heck of a play set on the defense by Radford. Again, setting the charge at just the right time in just the right place. Big block by Mangum. He's been huge today for his team on both sides of the floor. Radford now having an opportunity to extend their lead. Two huge defensive plays for Radford. But in the second half, Hampton has come up big defensively on a couple of occasions. Some confusion offensively. Jeffers to Mangum. He's got five. Step back, and he got fouled by Epps. He got caught on the hand there, right on the wrist there. Hampton doesn't like the call, but at the same time, where they are in this game, they're a little frustrated at almost anything that's not going to go their right way right now. I mean, understandably, they need things to go their way. Only five minutes, 40 seconds left in the game. So Mangum will shoot two, a 72% free throw shooter. The transfer from UNC Charlotte, who had to sit out the 19-20 season. That was due to the transfer rules. Back in the day, but no longer the case. Knocks down the front end. And he's got both. Two big free throws from Drayvon Mangum. He's got 13 now, leading all scores. He checks out, and McNeil comes into the game for the Highlanders. You can see visibly through Hampton's body language, they're upset with the result and feel like things just haven't been going their way. Yeah, they're a little frustrated and you see Dean trying to put the team on, the back, on his back and take it to the hole. May have been better to get a better look. And that's knocked away. Did Radford turn it over? What's the call? It's gonna go to Hampton. So Hart, I think he thinks he got fouled, but it's Haskett forcing the turnover. And I think Hampton really needs Dean to kind of try to get the ball reverse, get the defense to move really quickly to try to get a more open shot. I mean, he's very good with taking the ball to the hole. Inbound to Epps right wing. But it's easier when you make the defense shift. Makes his job a lot easier. Dean against Jeffers. Muscles his way in and gets the roll. Lead is cut to five. Jeffers, backdoor cut from Hart, up and under, and the foul is gonna go against Dickens. Hart will shoot two, and that's the guy that Radford wants shooting. And for Dickens, that's foul number three. So Garvin and Dickens, the two guys who have stepped up for Radford, both in foul trouble. Garvin with four, it doesn't look like Dickens' three fouls will cause too many issues for Hampton. Here's the shots from Hart. Hart, when he took that basket, I think he almost knew he was not going to make it, but he knew he had to reverse it to the other side and because that's where the contact was going to be. So very smart heads-up play by Hart. Hart misses both. Rare for the 6-2 guard. Here comes Haskett and company. Touch foul there. It's whistled against McNeil. Yeah, it's definitely uh, McNeil bumped into the dribbler. May add a little bit of help from that screen, from the screener. Nonetheless, the contact was made. Foul was called. Dean inbounds to Epps. Back to Dean. Trying to set up some sort of offense, something that Hampton has lacked here in the second half. A lot of one-on-one -on -one basketball. Here's Epps. Haskett 
Epps open look right wing. And cashes it through, and the lead is two. And that's what happens when you set up an offense and you run a play. So Epps gets an open look. His second big three of the game. And that will take us to a full media timeout. It's a good one down the stretch. Stick with us, 420. Yeah, and it's not going to get any easier as you get further into conference. Every team you're going to play is going to be hungry. It doesn't matter what the standings say or what the rankings say. What matters is what happens between those lines on the court. And it's not going to be easy. They're going to have to bring it every game. Bradford's got, as we said, quite a few weapons in their arsenal. They're going to have to put them all to use. Last four and a half, some full court pressure broken by the Highlanders. And Jeffers applied by Haskett. Bradford trying to work it around, it's Williams, now over to Hart, he has it in front of us, right wing. Hart, trying to shake and bake, over to Williams, he loses the handle. Now fighting for possession, and Hampton has it. And a jump ball, it's to Radford, they got away with one there, it looked like Hampton had full on possession, they reset the shot clock, and Radford gets the jump. Well, they were, Hampton had full on possession, but they also were fighting with each other, teammates, uh, for the ball, which starts to get into a weird territory where you can call walk and things like that so it was really but yeah they had it for at least a split second and it looks like a contact came out of Marquis Godwin's eye and take a pause here with 358 to go he still tries to put it in I've never been a glasses guy but that that's got to be tough in the midst of a game too down well, the last four minutes the additional piece that makes it tough is you've been touching that dirty ball right. all game long and then you touch your contact to put it in your eyes things a little bit it's going to make your vision a little blurry and your eyes burn jeffers left wing has it stripped away they'll call a foul it'll be on haskett jr and radford will shoot a one and one it'll be josiah jeffers a 68% free throw shooter. So big free throw coming up here for Radford. It's no good. And into the hands of Dickens. Let's go sideline to Tori. Tori, what do you got? Out competition in the Big South play so far. Bradford's had a lot of close games. And Coach Nichols was emphasizing to his team that coming out of that last um, timeout was the perfect opportunity for them to take care of the ball and extend that lead. Yeah, taking care of the ball and extending the lead is what Bradford needs to be focused on. Taking care of the ball first and foremost being the huge thing that Bradford needs to focus on. That one whistled against Bradford, the fourth team foul, and it'll go underneath. Radford has been all right from the free throw line today, seven of 12, but a big miss there from Jeffers. Open the door for Hampton to either tie it or take the lead. Here's Dean, dribble drive, left side, nine to shoot, poked away by Jeffers. If you're guarding Dean, you know he wants to go to the basket. You know he wants to score, so what you've got to do on the defensive end is play smart. Try to watch your body contact, try not to reach got away with Jeffers got away with one and got the ball poked away but you want to be careful and play more with your feet because he's going to attack and make you use them. Garvin has just substituted back in. Remember playing with four they want him for the last 315 he takes it to the hoop drives off the glass no big board from Jules last three minutes eight seconds anyone's ball game here. <laughs> Jeffers settles it down. As we said at home, folks, no rest for the weary. This will not get easier in this last three minutes. These teams are going to play tight to the wire. Jeffers, pull up jumper off a screen. He sinks it. Big shot. Four point lead, two possessions. Who's Hampton looking to get it to here? I guess Dean answers that question. He's going to shoot two, gets it to the basket. He's fouled by, it looks like, Shaq Jules. Yep, Shaq Jules. Very quick on his first step is Dean. He's very, very quick getting to the basket, and that's what 
Hampton needs is to attack the basket at this point. Dean, a 67% free throw shooter. Today he's two of two. Makes the first one, now three of three. And Hampton a perfect six for six from the free throw line today. Three point game. One possession, Dean and company hanging around. Dean has a team high 13 and now has 14 and leads all scores. And Radford needs to take care of the ball here. Hampton, you know they are hungry for that ball. They need it back. Jeffers gets a screen, pull up jumper. Ricochets away, Jules corrals. Jeffers has it, 15 to shoot. Who's the go-to guy here, Crystal? Honestly, as we've said before, you've got multiple scorers on the floor. Mangum's had an awesome day. Today, you might look for him on the dish. But offensive foul. foul. It's whistled. It looks like they got, I think it's Shaq Jules. And those are giveaway plays, Radford. You know, again, taking care of the ball, as Coach said, coming out of the uh, break, out of the timeout. Take care of the ball, look for those good shots. But right now, Radford wasn't, hasn't held it together enough to do that on their offensive possession. Hampton with a chance to make something happen. Dean, the guy with the ball there, you're going to expect to see him attack that basket as he's done in the last several plays. Excuse me, they got Jeffers on that last foul. Two-point deficit for Hampton. Dean possesses. Leads all scores with 14. Will it be him or Garvin? 12 to shoot. Dean. Looks like he wants matters in his own hands. Seven to shoot. Kicks to Epps with four. Dean, fadeaway, three. In and out. Dickens looking for it. And he scores. Ties the game at 51 with under 90 seconds. Jeffers tried to foul on that one just to at least stop the shot, but was unable to do so. Raffer calls a timeout. Timeout, Radford. All tied at 51 with 1.16 to go. It'll be a 30-second timeout. Dejour Dickens, four for his last five from the floor. Hampton on a 9-2 run in the last four and a half minutes. And Radford has not found an answer on the offensive end. Been scoreless for the last one minute and 32 seconds. Radford rushing, rushing some shots on offense. And they just weren't making things happen or making good smart decisions on offense. Hampton found a way to get to the holes, putting Rafford in bad positions on offense, and they're allowing, use that to get caught up in the game and have this score tied 51-51. How about the second half shooting from Radford? It has not been great. 32% from the floor, 25% from three, and on the game, Radford usually living and dying by the three. They're hanging by a thread on the three ball today. They've taken 27 and have made six. Both teams shooting terribly from the three. Hampton 20%, Rafford at 22% on the game. Not great shooting there. That's where your rebounds start to come up big, but both teams almost even there. Rebounds, Hampton 40, Rafford 41. They're kind of even on the boards. Right, fouls, both teams will be shooting on the next foul at one and one. Every conference game will come down to it. No difference here today. Williams, cut off by Haskett. Jeffers, pump fakes, drives, finishes with the left off the glass. Radford leads, timeout Highlanders. Coach Nichols, no doubt, going to drop something special on the defensive end to try to stop whatever the Pirates are going to throw at them on the offense. Defensive breakdown, let's take another look here. Jeffers, a clean path, and Haskett didn't want a foul, just gave a little swipe to Jeffers who now has seven on three of seven shooting. Mangum leads Radford with 13 points. And again, it's Dean with 14 leading all scores. But again, Crystal, who is that go-to guy for Hampton? We've seen Dean take the bulk of the shots, but Garvin, it seems like, has been able to get to the lane at will. Dean or Garvin uh, is where you'd expect to see the ball go. Both of those players are very good at getting to the basket and drawing the foul, drawing the contact, and that's what they need. But let's not forget you have Dickens on the floor as well. So those two can draw a lot of attention. You can see a dish down to Dickens for the finish as well. Now Garvin does have four. 
that wouldn't impact the last minute here as much, but if this game does go to overtime and you lose him, that would be a tough loss for Hampton in the extra in the extra period. And Garvin not on the floor right now. You'd have to think the answer is Dean. Maybe Godwin, he's working against Hart. Now over to Epps against Mangum. Driving, cut off, Haskett with 13. Short corner, it's short. Pulled down by Jules and assaulted by Haskett. They have to be broken up. And Jules will and shoot a one and one. Bit of a late call by the ref there. Saw that Haskett pulled Jules down from a standing position. He was laying almost down and pulled Jules down. We'll see that again. Turns and he dragged him down to the ground. He didn't have anything to stop himself because he had both of his hands on the ball. So he almost connected with his head there on the floor. And are they going to take another look at this? Yeah, you'd almost wonder if they take a look at that for an intentional foul because of the nature of it. And so Jules will shoot a one and one. Jules. Got a couple free throws today, two of three. Misses a big one. And a board to Jeffers. What a play from Radford and Jeffers. Snuck in there and grabbed the board. Ricocheted into the hands of number two. Radford can play for this shot here, 10 seconds. Now it's almost go time. Jeffers looking to put the dagger in. Blocked away by Dean with one on the shot clock and 16.3 to go in the game. And I know that he, Jeffers thought he was going to go get the uh, foul there on that take, but that may not have been the take. Maybe kick it out and get a more open shot. You don't want to squander this opportunity. Dickens has been a force down there all day. Looking for a tip in here is Radford. Jeffers to toss it in. It's the heart. Has to fire away. He does not get it off. It's a shot clock violation. Hart arguing that he didn't even touch the ball, but it looked like it was the right call. Looked it's like they had less than a second there. Yeah, it's a quick touch, tough call there. I, hard to tell which way that went. It was, I mean, it was only one second, it's all you get. So here we go. Hampton a chance to tie it or win it. Rather remarkable, the way they've been shooting and turning the ball over today. Uh, we look for Garvin back in the game. So we look for either Dean or Garvin to take the ball, probably draw the contact and try to play through the contact for the shot. We'll see. And what do we have here? It looks like they're going to look at something. Yeah, it looks like they're going to take a look. Probably at the uh, wind down of the clock there, that one second touch there. Now, they're, are they looking to see if he got it off or is it just a timing issue that uh, they probably both. They're probably looking to see if he got it off and then making sure that the reset of the clock and all that stuff kind of started when it needed to or the clock started back again when it needed to. They're probably taking a look at all that to make sure they got it right, which in a game this close, you want to take that chance and take that extra look. It's the beauty of technology these days to be able to look back at that. No matter what, it's going to be Hampton ball, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Down to 14.8 seconds to go. If you're Hampton, the way you've shot the ball today, 20% from three, 36% from the floor, not particularly great, They're turning the ball over 15 times, and you have a chance to win it here on the road looking for your first win in conference. you got to be relatively happy with that, the way you've played today. I look for Dean to try to take the ball first, and then perhaps, uh, you know, a Garvin getting a look at it. Either one of them, I look for them to try to get the contact, try to get the shot as well, uh, play through the contact. Hopefully the end one is what you want to go for. So 14.8 seconds. We'll see what Hampton has drawn up today. A chance to tie it or win it. If you're rapper, you got to play smart. Face up the defense. Do not make contact. Try to keep your spacing right. Allow them to take a shot, especially if it's a wild one. We saw some heroics from Radford last game. Can Hampton pull something off? Dean drives. No on the follow. And the foul to Dickens. It's going to be Shaq Jewel shooting and Radford in business and in the driver's seat. Dean went for a shot. As they say, shoot your shot. He went for it, was not able to make it. He did go amongst a lot of opposition there down near the basket. 
Nice defense by Radford, too, to not foul. Yeah, and that's tough to do at a, at a time like this. I mean, you've got the adrenaline going. You know what's at stake. You see the clock. You want to stop whatever. You know, you, you get in the red alert zone when they get there get ready to make the shot, but they played smart. Jules has a big first free throw. Very important first free throw for Shaq Jules. To Hampton's going to take that time out and ice him on the, uh, on the free throw line and also take try that, to get a yeah, set up. They're going to take that last time out. Yeah. So three-point lead for Radford. If Jules makes this free throw, it looks like the game is just about over as we take a look at the drive and the chance there for Hampton to tie it. He got his own rebound. Radford straight up there. Shaq Jules got a hand on that first shot there, was able to get at least a fingernail on it to change its trajectory so it didn't go in, and then they were able to pull the rebound after the second missed shot by Dean. Yeah, I think Coach Edward Joyner wanted a foul there against Russell Dean, and I didn't see anything there at all. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see any contact there. It is always tough. I mean, he was under the basket, and, and certainly that's a place you would expect to see contact. That's a place you would expect to see someone foul because when they're that close to the basket with what's at stake, somebody's going to go swatting at the ball or making contact in a way they shouldn't. But that did not happen, unfortunately, there, unfortunately for the uh, Hampton offense. And so Rafford now with possession. Shaq Jules back at the line to shoot a second shot. So if Jules misses this, and it ricochets into the hands of a Pirate. They'll have 2.3 seconds to heave one up from just about full court, maybe get a couple of dribbles and let one fly. Big free throw here from Jules. It was three of five today from the stripe. No, Hampton with a chance, Dickens. A three ball from Garvin, he got it off, and it's just shy. Boy, wow. gets down to one possession once again. Crystal Radford, edges.